thank you thank you respected chairpersons my dear friends and colleagues uh, at the outset i am thankful to uh, dr banshi sabu dr arvind sir and dr manoj chawla for giving me this opportunity to discussing diabetes and anxiety i think our previous uh, discussions has actually uh, partly has uh, discussed my topic itself so i am going to discuss diabetes and anxiety what is next so this is that thing are you anxious as you are suffering from diabetes or your anxiety is due to itself diabetes so this is the thing people i will discuss the topic with introduction what is the definition what is the prevalence then pathophysiology what is the bimodal association screening management and what is the future directions we have almost more than 80 million diabetic population is there in india now and people see on those people the both physical and psychological complication is significantly increasing depression and anxiety is quite common in those group of patients and whether this depression anxiety is a association or it's directly causes diabetes it's still debatable nobody knows the direct uh, causal relationship of that among those people see different types of generalized anxiety disorders the most common is associated to generalized anxiety disorders other rare forms like panic disorders obsessive compulsive diseases post traumatic stress diseases agoraphobia and specific phobia these are certain additional disorders which classically found in those group of patients so this is the classically what the dsm 5 criteria for generalized anxiety disorder so uh, this three or more of these symptoms like restlessness being easily fatigued um, uh, difficulty in concentrating irritability muscle uh, weakness and sleep disturbances these are the certain criteria as if more than three is present then usually we consider these patients having anxiety disorders people see the the what is the it is almost three times much more common in diabetic populations in the compared to general population and it is chronic course like anxiety recognition somatic symptoms and behavioral disturbances they are quite common in those group of patients and most commonly associated medical illness are generalized anxiety disorders and panic disorders these are the most two common disorders which classically associated with this uh, diabetes and uh, anxiety and if you see the prevalence 14% of diabetic people have generalized anxiety disorders but if you ask do you have some anxiety symptoms it might not fit to the generalized anxiety disorders but if you think about the anxiety systems close to 40% people have actually anxiety symptoms and it is much more found in women in comparison to the female in the ratio of almost close to 3 to 1 and people compare type 1 and type 2 probably there is both are equally uh, have actually similar risk of developing this anxiety disorders there is no difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes and this is again the indian prospective study which actually um, uh, study from actually north india which has shown the major predict predictors among the type 2 diabetes is age female sex insulin therapy and associated complications if these are there the anxiety disorder risk is much more high and again the depression is found to be 26% and anxiety is found to be 27% the comorbid depression and anxiety is 21% again women has higher risk and those who are in old age presence of different complications coronary disease cba they further increases the risk of anxiety in old age populations again there is an a study also from uh, our actually east india this is the idea group they have actually mainly actually seen not for the anxiety they have actually focused on the depression part again they have found significantly high level of depression among them in the range of 33% then coming to the gender differences it's clearly showing female are if you see the male versus female it is 0.85 versus 2.19 again prevalent diabetic 0.24 versus 1.6 that shows among female are significantly higher risk of anxiety disorders in com comparison to the male then what is the common pathophysiological link if you will see this chronic depression anxiety acts as a catalyst and this causes or exacerbates the symptoms of diabetes and this stress associated there are lot of pathophysiological mechanisms are there which if you will see this actually stress associated neurohormonal imbalance there occurs disrupted neurotransmissions 
inflammation and oxidative stress and also behavioral coping all those actually plays a critical role for particularly in the pathophysiology of anxiety and diabetes you see there is oxidative stress mitochondrial dysfunction impaired brain plasticity on hormone dysregulation there occurs elevated cortisol dysregulation of insulin and glp1 signaling again antiprotectin leptin all those plays a critical role again for the impaired neurotransmission point of view serotonin dopamine and noradrenaline again they play a critical role for that part so all those things leads to sleep sleep deprivation and also got plays also critical role in those pathophysiology if you see this vicious cycle that this sleep deprivation itself can cause increase in the noradrenaline level decrease in serotonin and also decrease in the neurogenesis and there are increased cortisol, increased glucagon, increased beta cell dysfunction with reduction in insulin. All those plays critical role with increases the insulin resistance, increases the stress level, introduces inflammation, hyperglycemia also metabolic dysfunction. What happens ultimately? There occurs first, there occurs development, minimis, aggression of diabetes condition, diabetic distress, increased psychological stress, there is development of symptoms of depression, that can further cause mismanagement of diabetes. Again, that leads to increase in the blood glucose level and also increase in the complication in future. So, what is the bimodal association? What are the evidence from the literature? You will see this is anxiety and risk of this is the evidence from the Baltimore Epidemiological Catchment Area Study, which is shown that it has actually there is no relationship between anxiety and diabetic risk after controlling the healthy behaviors and depression status. So, if the co-founding factors like healthy behavior and depression you are controlling, there is no direct causal relationship, particularly with um, anxiety and diabetic risk. Again, there is no significant relationship between anxiety and development of diabetic related complications. So, of course, anxiety itself can make the diabetics uncontrolled, make the blood glucose abnormal. But if you think a direct causal relationship between anxiety and diabetes, probably there is no relationship in this study. Again, you will see another study, this anxiety symptoms and the risk of diabetes mellitus from the Australian women evidence from 21 year follow-up study. Here, that this analysis shows there is association of transition between anxiety symptoms and associated modest increase the risk of diabetes. It did not produce a significant result to support a direct effect of anxiety causing diabetes. So again, same if, uh, inference that there is, uh, there is no direct relationship of anxiety is directly related to diabetes, but of course it can cause dysfunction or dysregulated blood glucose level. Again, this is a meta-analysis, review meta-analysis which has taken 14 studies that is showing a significant association between baseline anxiety with incident diabetes, this meta-analysis has shown. Again, that shows there is a little bit higher risk of diabetes, some of the studies show there is controversial, some are supporting that anxiety is actually directly causative relationship with the diabetes. Some are actually refuting that there is no directly relationship with particularly this thing. This is the forest plot which has clearly shown. Again, if you see the association between type 1 and type 2, then probably type 2 are much more directly related to anxiety. But if you want to see whether type 1 or type 2 is directly um, related to anxiety, probably following up a type 1 is better. The reason is they are early age of onset. So you can follow up this person for a quite a long period and that will clear cut give an idea whether the diabetes are much more prone to develop anxiety or not. So as a model, following up a type 1 is better than following up a type 2 diabetic patients. So what are the stress factors? If you see the emotional distress in diabetes or psychological reaction among the patients, there is emotional crisis like shock, denial, anger, guilt and anxiety. Diabetes distress that is overwhelmed for self-management frustrated, difficult in communication and distress of particularly different type of food in the family. Then phobia reactions like fear of starting insulin, needle and injections, hypoglycemia, late complications and also obsessive behaviors. Then psychological disorders like depression, anxiety, delirium, eating disorders or schizophrenia, all those actually play a critical role for particularly in diabetic patients. So that everything combined together leads to poor glycemia, self-care behavior and treatment adherence is reduced quality of life it reduced and also increase in the diabetic related complications. So that is actually these are the different factors which play a critical role for thing. Again diabetes distress and specific phobia is if you see again needle is one of the important specific phobia needle phobia is one of the important factor. Then patients with this condition likely to also miss glucose monitoring even if insulin doses due to this needle phobia and other communicable like sweating, anxiety, tremor, tachycardia, confusion due to hypoglycemic episodes and anxiety disorder sometimes is a diagnostic channel because 
these are the certain things during hypoglycemia can happen. Also, these are the classical symptoms of anxiety disorder. So, when someone is developing such symptoms, whether it is due to anxiety or due to hypoglycemia, sometimes it causes a diagnostic dilemma in those patients, unless otherwise you have not monitoring the blood glucose level, sometimes it gives some uh, uh, falsification or sometimes it actually makes a confusion for the person. So, perception of worsening of illness, severity to the addition of insulin, these are the psychological insulin, this is called psychological insulin resistance. That means the requirement of insulin represents a person's failure of managing illness. The need for insulin is perceived as a losing control over diabetes. There is apprehension and anticipated pain and discomfort regarding injection. Also, there is lack of personal benefit for the added stress and effort of using insulin. So, these all those factors are considered as a psychological insulin resistance. Because a lot of the patient thinks that if I have been started, probably I have failed from my side to managing my diabetes personally. Because it is not like that. Because in the natural course of the disease, we know there is of course progressive beta cell dysfunction and at one point of time, every type 2 has to take insulin. So, this is not that personal failure. So, we have to give support and we have to give advice to the patient. So, it is not your failure. It is the disease course which is responsible for particularly or, or making you, us to take insulin. Again, mental health and diabetic complications. So, it is a bidirectional association. That means older diabetic populations, depression and anxiety significantly because they have cardiovascular disease, they have CVA, they have um, sometimes urinary incontinence. All those things actually end up the important factor for particularly providing or doing uh, anxiety and depression. Those who having neuropathic pain, they did not get sleep during night. There will be tingling sensations. That was a anxiety. Again, those who having diabetic foot ulcers, also remaining for several months, years, not healing. That one of the important factors that gives significant anxiety. These are the specific diabetic related anxiety which classically happens among those patients. Again, what is the bimodal association? If someone is anxiety, that or sensor diabetic. Again, if someone is being diabetic, uncontrolled blood glucose, diabetic complications, as I have discussed, that again perpetuates or precipitates anxiety. So, it has bimodal direction or bimodal um, action that should be taken care and one should actually very much careful about discussing those things with the patients. Again, what are the additional comorbidities which can occur? There is if someone is having low level of physical status, no physical activity is one of the important factors which increases anxiety, reduces medical adherence, increases the risk of complications and also medicines that used for anxiety sometimes may worsen diabetes because you know a lot of antidepressants they will give that may itself in the reverse way they can increase the blood glucose level. So, these are some of the additional factors should be taken care of when we are discussing about anxiety in those group of patients. And how, who are should be screened? The screening is for the particularly depressive and anxious symptoms, if someone is telling, they should be screened. There are some vulnerable group. Who are the vulnerable group? Older people, female patients, those who are having on insulin or those who are having diabetic complications. These are the group. They should be at least screened for anxiety or should be actually have a questionnaire so that we can actually detect those people so that we can take care, special care should be taken for particularly those group of patients. So, there are different modes like actually STI, BAI and HADAS, these are the certain actually scoring system are there, but most commonly is heart scale is actually which is, this is the hospital anxiety depression scale, the D is for depression and A is for anxiety. So, these are different questionnaires are being used which gives a clear cut idea whether the person is having depression or anxiety during the course of the disease. And this is the, it well correlates with particularly age bands level, BMI level, fasting and postprandial level. And also it is not appreciated to detect a specific anxiety disorders and may have reduced validity in particular in the elderly patients because in elderly patients, these are the certain symptoms which is common to that age. So, sometimes it may actually not actually not, it will not, it will be difficult to specifically to differentiate specifically in the elderly group of patients. And how we are going to manage and treat those strategies? First thing is psychology patients should be, should not be stressed for anything. Stress should be relieved. Second is the dawn study emphasizes the psychological support and under in under resourced and inadequate patients that result in poor quality of life and metabolic outcome. So the ultimately it's the healthcare cost. So that means you should give some psychological support to those peoples, and that is most important factor. And this improves HBNC by giving only psychological support and psychiatric counseling itself improves the HBNC by 0.5%. And 
This is the particular the pyramid which shows actually in every visit the comorbid depression, anxiety, personal traits, quality of life should be assessed. The psychological intervention is utmost important and psychotic therapies, specifically cognitive behavioral therapies is most important and euthymia is optimal mood and psychiatric stability should be achieved in those groups. This is from the level 1, level 5 is considered very severe stress and level 1 is considered the least severe stress in the, this pyramid and if someone is having more than 3, 3, 4, 5, they should be properly taken care of, should be properly assessed because the risk of anxiety is so much high, sometimes they develop suicidal tendency. So these are the groups should be actually properly taken care of specifically in this pyramid if someone is having level above level 3 level. So then comes the coping strategies, how you are going to cope? This is the, uh, this is the, the delineation of coping strategies like need to particular counseling and support, psychological physical exercise and those that do, if someone is doing aerobic exercise at least three sessions per week or around 45 to 50 minutes for 12 weeks and anxiety and insomnia and diabetes that has clearly shown that is significant improvement. So doing aerobic exercise itself is one of the important factor which plays a critical role in those group of patients. So exercise is utmost important. Then psychological social interventions like CBT or motivational therapies or problem solving, diabetic self-management, these are the certain uh, psychological therapies is given, coping skills, training and family behavior. Family support is one of the important factors particularly in those group of patients and individuals should be made a part of, made a, all patients should be part of decision making and managing how patient is going to make stress free or reducing the stress level because if someone is have, uh, different uh, type of people have different type of stress so individualization is most, most important and they should be uh, discussed properly with those group of patients. So this is the cognitive behavioral therapy for managing fear of hypoglycemia like determine the actual or perceived frequency of severe hypoglycemic symptoms as the person about his or her, her concern developing symptoms normalizing the fear response as the person how the fear and anxiety has been successfully managed in other circumstances, the person's comfort zone for glucose level, whether in the higher level or lower level, because sometimes few people come with anxiety, my blood glucose is always remaining more than 150-200, that is also another anxiety for the patient. So which of the uh, thing is producing such type of anxiety is important and use of a gradual approach to notch the psychological safe glucose zone and discuss with the patient that with age, because a lot of the patient comes, sir, my friend is having blood glucose 110, but my blood glucose is remaining 160, and, uh, but you are telling it is normal. Because you have to discuss if a young person, 110 is okay. If a bit elderly person, 160 is also okay. So you have to individualize and you have to discuss with the patient. That itself helps in the reduction in the anxiety level in the patient. So when there are few drugs which has been actually directly found to actually help uh, reducing the anxiety. One is metformin. Second is DP4 and PPAR gamma agonist and third is GLP1 receptor agonist. They have found some effect on particularly specifically reducing the anxiety level. And this is a study that decreased risk of anxiety in diabetic patients in GLP1 receptor uh, 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 agonist. Among this, Lira, Dula and Exenatide all are taken, but Dula is found to be actually producing bit better effect in compared to other. They are female users, duration of our study is up to 180 days and Dula is found to be Better, the absolute incident reduction in anxiety is 2.13 per 1,000 person years versus depression. And an incidence of anxiety reduced in the, in the doula group is found to be quite statistically significant in comparison to particularly x group. This is the uh, graph which plots, uh, shows clear cut thing. Yeah. So, and specific focus is that goal of stigma in seeking the help of comorbid psychological disorders is what utmost important. Potential role of the family members is clear. Addressing the psychological problem improves their ability to adjust and take adequate responsibility is important. And patients should be interested with responsibility. Share decision making is utmost important in those group of patients. And we did some future studies like genetic studies. Who are the people prone for anxiety disorders? Is there any genetic marker which can actually make us to know that these are the group, they should be properly clear. So genetic study is required. Upcoming evidence is fecal microbiota transmission. These are the fecal mi microbiota transplantation is one of the important factors. Actually, some studies are coming. They might reduce the anxiety disorders. A special emphasis should be placed on prospective studies 
like link between various anxiety disorders and diabetes should be studied. So finally, my last slide, no health is without mental health. So early identification screening is utmost important. As a self-management, the core diabetic management is utmost important. Simultaneously with diabetic management, psychological intervention is important. It's bimodal association, endocrinologist and psychiatrist both serve as a court effectively and comprehensively. Thank you.